friends, welcome to our show. Today we are going to discuss about the problem of enlarged prostate in men above 50 years. And let me introduce Dr. Pradeep Mule, Senior Consultant Interventional Radiology, practicing in New Delhi, India. Welcome to the show, Dr. Mule. What is a prostate gland? Uh, prostate gland is the size of the walnut. Mm -hmm. You know, the walnut, the exactly the similar type of the size comes up for the prostate, right? Okay. And the prostate is located just below the urinary bladder. Okay. And which is uh, surrounded by the prostate gland. Mm -hmm. And these, the tube which connect from the urinary bladder mm -hmm. to the penis, to oh. pass the urine. Okay. And the main function of the prostatic gland is that to secrete the prostatic fluid. Mm -hmm. And this fluid is the very important component for a sexual activity also mm. and for a uh, semen also. Okay, okay. What is benign prostatic hyperplasia? Benign prostatic hyperplasia also called as a BPH also and also called as a benign prostatic hypertrophy. Okay. This is the condition in which the prostate gland that enlarge. Normally this happens into the man mm -hmm. after the 40 or maybe the age of the 50. The elderly age. Maybe. Yeah, elderly age this is a very common thing, mm -hmm. right? When you see the childhood, like the, uh, the prostate gland is very small, mm -hmm. but in the due course of the time, the prostate gland that grows in a life is twice. Okay. Once they, at the age of the puberty, mm -hmm. that time the gland is start like at the age of 25. Mm -hmm. And then again, they start uh, enlarging the prostate at the age of the about 40, 40. and 50. Okay. And uh, most of the time, the enlargement of the prostate gland that won't produce any kind of the problems. But if this gives the any kind of the enlargement, particularly very close to the tube which passes the urine, mm -hmm. so that time they may get some kind of the obstruction. Okay. So during this time, the prostatic hyper hyperplasia, they may sometimes get the low stream of the urine and may sometimes they hesitate to pass the urine also. Okay. And because of the compression on the urethral passage, mm -hmm. right? So bladder and neck also get the little obstructed. So bladder, urinary bladder that has to work a little more mm -hmm. to pass the urine. Okay. Right? So this is the benign hyperplasia. Okay, all right. Why does benign prostatic hyperplasia occurs? Uh, till now, actually the no cause is found uh, to enlarge the prostate. Mm -hmm. But a lot of research, they say that this is the aging process. During the age after the 50, the prostate gland, gland start enlargement. Mm -hmm. But some researchers, they found that if a removal of the scrotum is done or a testis is done at the age of puberty, those, they don't get the enlargement of the prostate. Okay. So this may, I think, the influence by the testosterone hormone, which is present normally in men. Normally in males. Okay. Yeah. What are the symptoms of enlarged prostate? Uh, when you talk about the enlarged uh, prostate gland, so there's two types of the enlargement is there. One is the generalized enlargement, mm -hmm. as a, like a whole prostate gland is enlarged. In some people, there may happen sometimes the only the one lobe, which is called as a median lobe, which enlarge. Whatever the type of the enlargement is there, if this gives the compression into the urethral passage, mm -hmm. that is, a, you know, the urethral passage is to pass the urine. Yes. If that get, get compression on that, this common type of the symptoms is the hesitation of the urination. When they go past the urine in the early morning, the first urine pass, mm -hmm. and that may sometimes the narrow stream comes. Mm -hmm. It takes a little time to pass the urine. And once like person is not past the whole urine, right? So mm -hmm. they may go after the two hour, three hour again. This mm -hmm. is also known as the increased frequency of the urination. Sometimes some people, they feel that the, the bladder is totally filled and mm -hmm. they may feel little like heaviness in their lower abdomen. But they can't also. pass down the yeah, urine. It's not passed also, right? But increased frequency, normally this happens in the daytime. Mm -hmm. But once this become a very chronic, so this may happen sometime during the nighttime also. In night time, they may go for it like a three time, four time to pass the urine. Mm -hmm. Some are the like a 10, 10 to 15 percent of the people, those are sexually active, mm -hmm. they may get some sexual problems also. Okay. Like what kind of the sexual problem, they, they may get the erectile dysfunction also. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they may develop the retrograde ejaculation also. Mm -hmm. So what the normally the cement has to be come up through the penis, but that should go back to the urinary bladder. Mm -hmm. These are the, like the common symptoms. Mm -hmm. Mainly when you talk about the symptoms, the hesitation, increased frequency, these are the two very common symptoms is there. Okay, so mainly it affects the urinary problems. Yes. Okay, but uh, how can an enlarged prostate be diagnosed? Uh, for a diagnosis, uh, once the 
men having the, this kind of the problem mm-hmm. they visit to the doctors okay and doctors normally they do the first the digital examination that is the wearing the hand gloves and put the finger into the rectum mm-hmm. because the prostate gland is very close to the rectum okay. so they can by this technique they can evaluate the how the enlargement and other things mm-hmm. are there for a prostate you can feel the so swelling one, yeah. and all so this is the one manual diagnosis mm-hmm. and, the, and, and another one also there the trans abdominal or a trans rectal ultrasonography also you can do that mm-hmm. trans rectal or it a trans abdominal sonography which shows the exactly the size of the prostate gland how that defined and what the lobe is enlarged how much the narrowing is there in the urinary passage mm-hmm. so this is the two techniques main and if further if you wanted to know that nowadays a lot of people they asking for a magnetic resonant imaging also to mm-hmm. diagnose the uh, prostate gland because now the detection rate for a prostate cancer which is the very good the screening process and other things so that's for the mr that gives the good clue you can rule out any kind of the mass lesion mm-hmm. or any kind of the cancer or something is there although the benign prostatic hyperplasia which is not the cancer this is okay. just the aging process and enlargement of the prostate okay okay all right so generally people mistook it as a cancer uh, it's symptom not a cancer yes okay okay so uh, talking about treatments what are the treatments for the enlarged prostate how can it be cured uh treatment option the various options are there mm-hmm. one is the medical management okay and lot of uh, researcher they still wanted to found some kind of the medication which controls the enlarged uh, prostate symptoms mm-hmm. but it still is not uh, the perfect medication is there okay. some are the 10 to 20 percent of the male they may sometime re- get some temporary relief also mm-hmm. and some may not get also So the other the other are the surgical options are there, and in surgical option there so many other so many options are there, like uh, TURP one surgery is there, one the laser surgery is there. Now the so many the green light and other kind of the surgery also available. But these all surgery mm-hmm. is done under the anesthesia. Okay. And this done through the penis, go inside and whatever the area of the enlarged prostate gland they take out from that area and they come out. Okay, so this seems to be very risky, also. Yeah, so these like the one is the medical management, one is the surgical management. Mm-hmm. But now, when you see that like the another new line of the management, which is very promising to treat the enlarged prostate, mm-hmm. that is called as the prostatic artery embolization. This is the technique exactly what normally the intervention radiologists all over the world they do. For it, pros- uh, uterine fibroid also. Okay, so this is a non-surgical. Uh, it is a non-surgical technique. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, but uh, is the prostatic artery embolization a safe procedure? It is a very safe procedure, hmm. and uh, particularly when you see that this technique is done under the local anesthesia, hmm. and when you see the during the surgery time. Because this happens, the enlargement of the prostate gland at the aging process, maybe the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, right? So at that time, the lot of male they have some other comorbidity also. Mm-hmm. They may have the sometimes the cardiac problems. They may have the hypertension also. May sometimes the diabetic also. Mm-hmm. So these are the comorbidity. In comorbidity are there. They may tolerate that kind of the major surgery or may not be also. Mm-hmm. So if you compare with that one, so this is the done under the. prostatic artery embolization done under the local anesthesia mm-hmm. and this need just the only the one day hospitalization mm-hmm. and this not need any surgical scar also okay and no risk for a bleeding during the procedure mm-hmm. this just like a simple the angiography mm-hmm. you do the we go through the uh, groin area we make the one small puncture the puncture also is a very similar to what the way you the blood sample okay and through that we take one small tube inside to go identify the prostatic artery and whatever the abnormal arteries which supplying to the enlarged prostate that we block by the one medication which is the pro- two kind of the medications now the available mm. one is the ambosphere is there one is the p uh, uh, polyvinyl or cold particles are there mm. these two particles are available mm. and the next day patient can go home also in this technique okay, okay so it doesn't need need any recovery time you yeah. mean yeah. to say and uh, what can the patient expect during this procedure 
uh, patient expect only the like when you give the local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Patient can talk to the doctor mm -hmm. very well during the procedure okay. because patient is fully conscious. Conscious. He has to lie down for around like 20 to 30 minutes time, mm -hmm. and we give the local anesthesia that may be the little like mild pain kind of things are there. But mm -hmm. in the same time, mm -hmm. some are the patient are very apprehensive, right? So we give some mild pain medication this thing also. Okay, but uh, talking about this non-surgical procedure, what exactly happened to the prostate after this prostatic artery embolization? Uh, once you block the abnormal blood supply mm -hmm. to the prostate gland, in large prostate gland, mm -hmm. right? So in a due course of the time, in a two week or three week time, this start getting the shrinkage and this become a little softer also. Okay. So that relieve the symptom. Mm -hmm. This causes the less compression over the prostatic urethra. Mm -hmm. So if the compression is not there in the urethra, mm -hmm. so they may get the, all the symptom relief like uh, their hesitation, narrow stream. Even though they have the sexual condition that also improves after these procedures. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific enlarged size of the enlarged prostate which you cannot be treated by PAE? Uh, see the enlargement of the prostate normally when I do my OPDs. Mm -hmm. That time I see the various sizes of the gland mm -hmm. that may sometimes measured by the grams also. Mm -hmm. Suppose I seen the one patient at the at the time that the prostate gland uh, gram wise is around like the hundred gram. But sometimes the patient say, I know I don't have any problem. Okay. But sometimes even at 25 gram or a 30 gram of the prostate, that if the causing the compression over the urethra, mm -hmm. right? So they may get the terrible problems also. Okay. So if a patient is asymptomatic, then definitely you have to treat. Okay. Right? Uh, size does not make much difference on the line of management. Mm -hmm. Patient has to be symptomatic. Okay. Okay, what are the advantages of prostatic artery embolization? Uh, this is the biggest uh, advantage as compared to the surgical procedures mm -hmm. because this is done in the local anesthesia and particularly the prostatic artery embolization, these techniques don't have any kind of the complication. What normally we see in the surgeries, in surgeries like a bleeding, incontinence, mm -hmm. need a urine bag and that catheter for a one week, two week, three week, this does not happen into the prosthetic artery. Mm -hmm. And I know that the most of the male with that age group or any age group, then nobody like to take a urine bag and just roaming around for a two or three weeks, right? Yes. So this hampers their day to day activities also. Mm -hmm. And even in this technique is the no blood loss. Okay. Like in surgery, there's a lot of blood loss also there sometimes. Mm -hmm. They depend upon the what kind of the surgery you are doing. Mm -hmm. But in prosthetic artery embolization, there's no blood loss, mm -hmm. no need to ask for a blood transfusion also. Mm -hmm. And the mobility, mobility and the routine activities and other things. Like suppose if you do the today the prosthetic artery embolization, the next day they can resume the normal uh, work. Okay. Even next day they can drive the car, they can go to the office. Mm -hmm. So this become a very easy. Mm. Even one of the biggest advantage, right, uh, after the surgery, the man, they may lose sometimes the sexual activities and other things also. Mm -hmm. But after the prosthetic artery embolization, this gives the enhancement to their these all the things. Okay, so they right. became more healthy and active. When you, when you see that this kind of the technique when they started in uh, Europe, mm -hmm. right, so now being in the other Western countries also. So most of the people, they are attracted just because of the one reason, this don't give any sexual dysfunction. Okay. So that's the biggest advantage in the prostate. Mm -hmm. Generally, people will look forward for this. Does the prostate grow back after the PAE treatment? Uh, PAE treatment, as compared to the, the open surgeries and the other surgeries, right? This is a very new kind of the technique is there. Mm -hmm. All over the world, till now, the four to five year experience is there. Okay. But good number of the literature, they say the recurrence is not there after the prosthetic artery embolization. That's quite it's good. Time, time, time will tell after the like a five year and six year and ten years, right? But if the person goes on this one, at least they don't lose anything, mm. right? So they will mm. get a very good results in the, uh, by the prosthetic artery embolization. Okay, and the prosthetic artery embolization, uh, you said that the non-surgical procedure is yes. very much beneficial over the surgical procedure. So the non-surgical procedure, is it uh, covered under insurance? Yeah, it's a good number of the insurance, now they started covering. Okay. Initially, what happens like when you send this new kind of the technique to the insurance people, mm -hmm. right? 
insurance people also sometimes very blank they don't know about that mm-hmm. but now they started knowing that no this is giving the good results lot of literatures and other things are available mm-hmm. so some are the insurance definitely that covers the prosthetic artery embolization procedure okay okay so uh, is is this procedure any painful no not at all this is just mild pain is there the simple the only the simple pain medication is more than enough when they go home also they not need to be take so much pain medication mm-hmm. only like after the procedure we give the 3 to 4 and 5 days antibiotic as a prophylactic that's all again uh, after the non surgical procedure till how long one can get back to his work two days only two days only two days less than two days you can say okay so two days uh, can yeah. be said as the recovery period yeah, recovery. for that okay and uh, talking about follow ups what are the follow ups and uh, precautions required after this treatment uh, normally the prosthetic artery embolization what normally the international standard is there right now we are used to call after the 7 days mm-hmm. and then after a month mm-hmm. after 7 day only the purpose to call them to see that any kind of the infection sign is there or not otherwise you can start that medication okay after the one month we do the one the repeat ultrasonography mm-hmm. to find out how much the reduction of the size is there and how much their improvement is there clinically okay right that does not make any difference on the size reduction is the how much mm-hmm. i just wanted to know that the how much the your symptom is gone what the your problem is gone down after mm-hmm. the treatment that's all the follow okay and what's the cost of this treatment how much expensive is it the uh, cost of as compared to the surgery is definitely less because need not anesthesia mm-hmm. need just the one day admission mm-hmm. not need is so many antibiotic and so many medication also the cost automatically is come down mm-hmm. for a prosthetic artery embolization and how successful is this procedure in controlling the symptoms of enlarged prostate yeah this is the one very good question and uh, overall when you see that like uh, any size of the prostate when you do the prosthetic artery embolization around 95 to 98% of the people they get the really great results mm-hmm. 1% of the people they may not get the good results but who are them is difficult to identify before doing the prosthetic artery embolization these all depend upon the how vascularity is there in the prostate okay that doesn't have any concern with the age no mm-hmm. because this done in the local anesthesia so you don't consider there the comorbidity other problem of the patient mm-hmm. okay so dr mole what are the other non surgical options you are providing other no see the be a, a interventional radiologist right we do the all the vascular non vascular interventions so we have the total list of the non surgical treatments good so normally like i like to enumerate some are the disease mm-hmm. which is commonly known to the general public and the general people also mm-hmm. like a uterine fibroid mm-hmm. then the adenomyosis okay. and in women that comes the pelvic congestion syndrome if a block follicle tube is there lot of hemangioma is also the tangled of the all the veins and arteries that also we treat now the without surgery okay and then the back pain which caused by the sometime the lumbar spine discarnation or something on that we do the ozone therapy and okay. the nerve block okay even in the male when you talk about that like the varicocele also treated by the varicocele embolization these are the non surgical treatments mm-hmm. Okay so it's a good number of non surgical treatments you are providing Dr Mule and I would really thank you to uh, sharing the this information to the people because generally uh, the male at the elderly age generally suffer from enlarged prostate gland and gland and they look for surgeries even but uh, looking at your episode they will be relieved I'm sure thank you thank thank you very much